Hey guys, what is up? Kingdom Keeper here with another On the Battlegrounds. Today, a guy I am extremely excited for, Hu Yi, the Defender of the Earth. I love this guy to death. He is crazy good. He's crazy OP. I'm calling Nerf right now. The day is 1-16-2015, 6.15pm, I'm calling Nerf. But on another note, um, general improvements, and I just general really, uh, a couple guys got some updated tooltips and whatnot, nothing too big to talk about, just who ye. And it's, he's the first guy to smite season 2, and they're kicking it off so well. Just look at this detailing, look at, look at this guy's bow right here, it's, it's amazing, he's just so good. Like, I just can't wait for all the new stuff to come in season 2, it's gonna be great, I can't wait to be here for it. Uh, also, there were some new things added in in a new treasure chest. Uh, the Spring Festival chest will give you a, uh, a exclusive skin. Uh, Lucky Baby Fatua was added. Uh, some Chinese New Year stuff, and additionally, you can get some uh, very nice skins. Uh, all of all of which I want, except for Afro, and I guess Changa and the ward bundle but other than that i'd be happy getting any of these uh, need to get me some more gems and the mystery chest which gives you a one percent uh chance to get one of these awesome skins and you can just get anything off in the game uh i guess i suppose i haven't bought anything from it yet but i suppose that's how it works i don't know one percent that's it's not a lot i only have five out of sixty because i'm really poor but you know that's, that's how that works, and besides that, that is it. Nothing much else. So let us get right into the jungle here, and check this guy out. I really wish that I could have rented him, because I so would have done a joust with him like we did with the Wheelix. But unfortunately, we do what we can. They don't allow you to rent the brand new god. Unfortunately, I guess, whatever, uh, I gotta wait till they put a new god in so that way he's not uh, 1100 or 11,000, whatever, favor, because dang, man, that's expensive, that's like two gods for the price of one, and one god for the price of two, there we go. Yeah, apparently he's got a thing with Chunga. I'm not exactly sure what it is yet, but it's a thing. So anyway, let us get straight into this wonderful, wonderful kit here. Uh, his passive Sun Touch. After taking a critical crit <clears throat> critical hit, he can't be crit again for three seconds. Now this would make him good against an, a hunter like Artemis, who gets a very early crit. So remember that. Who ye good countered Artemis? And actually, there's an item, I think, that does the exact same thing. Um, it's a helm. I know that. I don't know. Maybe it's for magic people only. Uh, that's probably it. I either way, that's a really good thing. Uh, good for Artemis. Let's get into his other abilities. His first ability, Ricochet, which is a one-of-a-kind ability, I get like a Wheelix mount, it will fire a, it's a straight line projectile, as all hunters have, but this uh, straight line projectile will bounce off of walls and will do additional damage after the bounce, 50%. If we see the targeter, yeah, it has a little bit of a charge. We can see how we can bounce it off the wall over here. <sighs> Don't care. Yeah, it bounces two times, and it does additional damage after the first and or second bounce yeah plus 50 percent da uh, damage per bounce for maximum of two bounces that is really good I let me tell you there on the uh, day it was released the match of the day uh, had you pick any chinese god so of course i went hui because oh yeah i want to try this guy out i can't even tell you how many trick shots i got it was crazy good this guy is amazing but yes ricochet you can see here it's really cool. It's a really cool ability. I really hope they don't nerf it because that would just that would just make Matthew very sad. Kill some minions over here. 
get some more EXPs. And oh, another thing I should note about this ability that I found cool is if you get an enemy really close to a wall uh, and you uh, ricochet, you can bounce it off the wall right back at them to get that extra 50% of damage and it'll happen really quick so it'll just you can do a lot of damage really quick by doing that I go over here you can see that it's a little weird to lining it up so you won't just be able to spam it like that but if you get it like this or something or something close to that that extra 50% of damage will happen and it'll happen really fast see I just did a lot of extra damage to these minion groups now we'll hold off on the two because uh, you need a god target to use that so we'll talk about the three next, which is essentially his dash or leap, because every uh, every hunter, every good hunter has one of these. So his three dive bomb, who he launches in the, into the air with a bow in a really retarded position, and then goes to the gr dives to the ground. And let's check that out. Yeah. He He's like doing a little ballet in the air. I really, I don't like the animation. I wish they didn't do that, but whatever. I guess it's cool. At first, I thought it was like one of the weakest uh, dashes in that they caught, could have possibly given him. But really, it do, it brings you as far as like an Apollo or a Rama would. So it's not that bad. Get some more mana, and let's just get his ulti here. His ulti, Sunbreaker, the one that broke the smite game, the one that's an Agneo on steroids, it is great. But before we talk about that, we're gonna go straight into the Mark of the Golden Crow, we hold off on it. Uh, Hui marks the target with the Golden Crow, this will also give him plus 15% penetration, and uh, they take an extra 10% of their missing uh, health from your uh, abilities and basic attacks. It's really good, you don't want to get marked with this. He has a very long range, so he could easily come from the jungle, mark you, and then just spam you. And before we talk about his ultimate, again, we're holding off on that for a little bit, we're going to talk about what this Golden Crow does when comboed with your other abilities. So, first we mark him. The three, if you are on top of them, they will be knocked up and back with that. And the one, the one will stun them for a brief duration. I think it's like one second. It's uh, really good. You can combo both of those together and just do a lot of damage in a short time and delay him so we can't really fight back. First blood, bitches! Alright, now. Now for the ulti. <laughs> oh yeah. Look at that. Now, really, it doesn't do a lot of damage. I've tried it against this Ra as many times as I could, and I could never 1 to 0 him with the ult itself. So it doesn't matter if you're building all damage and penetration items, you will most likely never 1 to 0 any god with just your ult. And I've taken into consideration, uh, like, well, this guy doesn't have any items. Maybe it's, or maybe he's messed up, but no, I'm absolutely positive that the ult will not 1-0 to zero someone. But it is very good if you combo it with like an Odin Spear or something. I just recently got done with a match actually that had a Hu Yi in it, I was Odin. And I put him in the ring, and every time I did, Hu Yi would ult, and it was just Massacre. It's a Massacre in there. So it works well with Odin. Odin support might be coming back. Odin support might be a thing. Ah oh, yeah, look at that! Look at all that damage. God, I hate the blind. The blind is very annoying. And yeah, I don't have any any real strength here because I'm not building items yet. So yeah, I'm gonna from now on. I'm not gonna build items until we get to the item building phase, just so it's not weird. All right, uh, <laughs> what up? Oh no! Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure the three also makes you damage immune, like a Weedix's two, or many other abilities that I won't name off. Get marked and then stunned and then altered. It's a great combo, really, because your first natural instinct when you're getting hit by an enemy is to run away, especially when you're taking heavy damage like that. You're taking heavy damage, so your first reaction is going to be to turn around and run away. 
but behind him is just the larger portion of the AOE. So really, he's gonna turn around and realize, oh wait, this is wrong, and he's gonna start to go the way out of it. And by that, t and you're still there. So yeah, he's he's gonna die either way. I like to call it the panic strategy. If you put people in a, with a panic where they can't really think straight or quick enough, then it's really easy to confuse them and get them in a situation where you can easily kill them. It's really hard to demonstrate it against uh, AI Ra, but I will definitely play some assassins against IC Austin and show you guys the true meaning of fear. I also believe that this guy could jungle. I'm calling it out that jungler Hu Yi could possibly be a thing. Because, like, I feel like it could. Like, you could definitely get some ganks in, I know that. I don't know. But that probably won't be as popular. I am, I'm totally trying to bring this guy, bring this guy into the solo lane with me, though. Uh, and for those of you who don't know me, I play solo lane about 98% of the time. When it's not that, it's uh, jungle or ADC. And I do mid occasionally with Scylla. And Scylla OP. Now, we'll go into item village real quick. Yay, ionization, the part that Matthew loves. Uh, I just like, I just love when I think a build is good and then it's actually not. But whatever, I know a lot about this game, so I'm sure it's fine. Uh, really, I was looking through the possibilities and there's really, I can't find anything special about his kit, like... I, I, he's, he's got a great kit, do not, that's not what I'm saying. But there's nothing about his kit that would gain any additional bonuses from any extra items. He is a hunter, and he is a good hunter. He is a, uh, one of those, he's a top hunter, in my opinion, like Rama and Apollo. So really, you just build him like a Rama and Apollo. Uh, for those of you don't, who don't know, play ADC, and you don't know how to build a Rama or Apollo, you usually start off with your death toll, try to go into um, Devourer's Gauntlet uh, soon. You want to have your Devourer's Gauntlet uh, before the 10 minute bark or shortly after that. Because getting that still stacks up will greatly help your sustain. But you want to have Warrior Tabi, Devourer's, Shin Size if you can get it, but if not, definitely go Executioner. Uh, Rage. And from there on, you can choose, hmm, are they building tankier or are they building not tankier? In which case, if they're building tankier, build a Titan's Bane, 100%. If they're not, build a Jotun's Wrath because those cooldowns might just end up saving your life. And then go into a Deathbringer to wrap it all together in a nice little bow. And there you have it. That is a standard build for most ADCs. Um, well, except for Jotuns, I don't see many people building Jotuns these days, but I always get it just because of it. That's only because where he's a level 5 and I have like a full item build. So, you know, he's not OP, guys. He's not that OP. Anyway, so uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I like Jotuns because of the cooldown and because I love spamming abilities. So, you normally won't see that on most people's builds. God, this isn't even fair. I should give this guy more levels. But you usually won't see people build that. I always build that. It gives you a lot of a lot. Because, like, you get the cooldown, which is, like, it's not like 10% or anything. It's 25%. That's usually the most amount of cooldown a single item will get you. So it's really good. It'll give you penetration. It's it's a really good item. I build it on almost every one of... Actually, not almost every one of my physical characters gets it. Because it's just such a good item. Ah, yes. Speaking of leveling, when you're talking about leveling, usually you want to start with the one, obviously, it's wave clear, and then you want to go into the two, because the two does extra things that haven't talked about yet. <laughs> At rank three, the two will reveal enemies on your minimap, and that's really handy, because, you know, that lets your jungler know where they are, lets everybody know, hey, this guy's here, and he's queer. And not, I didn't mean that offensively. And at rank five, you also gain extra penetration, so that's great. That, that's just great. Penetration for days! So you're gonna start with the one, the two, and then the three. The three is just a dash, it's not very important. And of course, level the ulti when you can. 
even at max rank with all these items that still only brought this guy down to half health. You will not ever 1-0 anybody with your ult. I am sorry. I wish it was more OP, but it's not. But it is still an Agni ult on steroids. That claim is not wrong. But yes, Energist, that is the god who ye, an epic hunter who I am definitely going to get and who will probably make me stop playing Apollo. Yeah, and getting those stacks, stacks on stacks for devourers. The combos are crazy, man. Like, just imagine if this was a real raw. I mean, obviously, he'd probably have a little more defense than this, but typically, you're not going to find your mid laner building much defense unless, I don't know, a Scylla, where you really don't need to build a lot of damage because your passes will just give you so much extra damage that you're already an item ahead by endgame. So, yeah, really, if you, uh, by level 20, if you've got this sort of build and you're fighting the mid laner Ra or whatever, it. Because they generally don't get more tanky than this. So, yeah, that damage isn't all that far-fetched. So if you see me um, doing this, it's really probably as accurate as it's going to be. The only thing that's not accurate about it is the fact that all my shots are on key for all the extra damage. Because he's backed up against the wall, not really moving. But if you were to gank him with the crow, and then the three to get him up, and then you could easily turn around and hit him with the one. It's not hard. It's just that people would might people who aren't that good with hunters might find it a little more difficult to combo together. It really shouldn't be all that hard. I actually did miss with the one just then. But even if you did miss with the one at rank 20, you should be one to zeroing anyone who's not a tank or a warrior. So really, hunt ADC man, ADC crazy. Hey Ra, I heard you were the god of the sun. Not anymore. <laughs> oh, that was terrible. <laughs> That's terrible. Where, where do you get your jokes? Like, there you are. Come on. Ugh. But yeah, this is hype right here. Uh, the only thing I'm really, I really wasn't happy about in the uh, recent update was the fact that they didn't put the new Conquest map in yet. I was so excited, like, yeah, this is going to be in the next update, it's going to be great, I'm going to do Conquest videos, and then they just didn't, and I'm like, oh, okay, shit in my face. <clears throat> yes, so much damage! This isn't lying, people, that's, Raw will not get more tankier than that. I don't think I've ever built really physical defense on any mid laner besides a Scylla. Because again, you get that extra damage. So unless it's a Scylla, you will probably do damage really close to this. Hmm. You know, I just realized something. I don't have any actives. Yo, no. Uh, yeah, again, I haven't really found anything that combos together with them. So actives, yeah, you just... Weakening curse I would get, definitely. Because that would help with his ult. Uh, blink maybe, uh, uh, girl of Persian, inner, yeah, a girl of inner, uh, in, inner power, I keeps wanting to say instant, uh, inner power, yeah, it's really just situational again, but either way, that is who ye, and that is a new god, hopefully we'll stop smite soon and get to some stuff you guys actually want to see, I do have more games planned, so we'll do that soon, but until then, I'm still gonna keep playing smite. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you later.